Hello everyone and welcome back to some more Warhammer Underworlds for the channel and in today's matchup we have the Sepulchral Guard versus the Gore Chosen of Drom. So it's basically Lazy Skeletons versus Angry Men. Look at them all, look at them. They just do whatever the Warden says and he just sits there the entire game and does nothing else. So it's the Warden, Harvester, Champion and at the back there are the three Zealous, or rather Petitioners, Zealous Petitioner, Inevitable Petitioner and Rising Petitioner and they all inspire basically if they have a raise counter because they keep getting brought back by the Warden himself. And here are the three making up the Gore Chosen of Drom being led by the man himself dead center. Screen left is the Gore Hulk and screen right is Skull Grinder Herrix. They all begin with one Blood Tithe counter. They get a, another one if they are dealt damage or deal damage and they can inspire when they have three or they can spend them to get some benefits. That about does it. We'll get everything deployed. Be back when that's done after this quick word from my channel sponsor. This video is sponsored by Noble Knight Games. Check out the video description below for an affiliate link that will take you through to their store and it will help me out as well. Thanks. And just like that, we're back. This Pulchral Guard will be going first in round one. So all that remains is to flip over the objective tokens for the purposes of seeing them on camera. Three over here with the guard. They have four, two, and then in No Man's Land, they placed five. Oh yeah, in terms of where they are, Warden as far back as possible, Harvester Champion, and the three petitioners around him because they're the chaff, basically. And then we have one and two over here. Uh, sorry, one and three, rather, over here for the Gore Chosen, who are very aggressively placed right there. So with that, let's jump into round one and count on one hand the number of times the Warden is going to move this game. So of course the Warden got the game started because he always does for the Sepulchral Guard. He did one of the two actions on his card. He chose two friendlies to do move actions. The Rising Petitioner moved on to Objective 4 here and the Prince of Dust moved on to Objective 2 over there. I think I accidentally called him a Petitioner there uh, in the previous clip, but either way, so they moved, nothing else happening there, no power cards played by them, or rather no cards played in the power step. But the Gore Chosen are putting a Domain card into play, Domain of Blood, which is ironic I guess because the Skeletons don't have any. Fighters cannot be healed or driven back. This persists until the end of the next activation or until another Domain is played. Probably not going to be super relevant, but hey, it's in play for the turn we're about to go into. The Gore Hulk was first up for the Gore Chosen of Drom and a lot of stuff happened as a result of this activation so we're going to need to cover it in steps. He did the charge action onto Objective 5 in No Man's Land. He struck into whichever petitioner that is, I believe that's the inevitable petitioner. Two dice looking for swords since he was trying to do his big three damage attack. They have two health so they're all easy to one shot. He got swords and he got a crit so obliterated said petitioner off of the table getting one glory for the kill of course but actually scoring a second for a potent offering right here which is a surge objective card score this immediately after an enemy fighter is taken out of action if a domain gambit is persisting which it is the domain of blood was active so that was the little trick they were doing there and they're also spending one of the two glory they just earned on aura of wrath and giving it to the gore hulk it means enemy fighters within two of him, actually it's just fighters, fighters within two of him cannot be driven back, they ain't going anywhere, so he's just holding them near him, but for the Sepulchral Guard, they score Land of the Dead in the opponent's turn, so that's pretty good, score this immediately after an opponent's activation step, if your warband holds two or more objectives, and the total of those is six or more, they hold four and two, so it was exactly six, so that was them on the board for one as well, which they spent in the power phase on giving the warden's command to the warden and it's his best card so they got it nice and early it gives him an additional possible action you give him a charge token in order to replace two dead team members it's really really powerful especially because getting those raise counters inspires them that is a ridiculously good card that you want to get early and they did oh one last thing i forgot to mention same thing happening in the power phase bone shrapnel was played when the petitioner died it just means that the Gore Hulk takes one damage as a result of the skeleton exploding. It's great art on that. So I think that covered everything. A lot of skeletons on the move after the Warden's second activation. He picked two skeletons to do a move action. He picked the Champion and the Harvester. They both moved their two hexes forwards to where you can see them. But No End to Our Duty was also played in the power step. Choose a friendly fighter with one or more move tokens. They make a move action. So the Petitioner that was on Objective 4 
has moved forwards too. It's just to try and potentially tie someone up or be able to come in for support if the warden is under threat. It might be bait, but Drum decided to take it, doing a charge action for the second activation of four for round one for the Gore Chosen. Moved into no man's land. He's got range two on that huge staff of his. Two dice looking for hammers. He got two hammers, and the rising petitioner rolled Bupkis, meaning his head gets shattered by two damage, and he insta dies. That is the third glory gained of the Gore Chosen, and one is being spent on Sharpened by Rage and giving that to Drom as an upgrade. Bit of text here. In the Declare Attack Action step, you can remove one of this fighter's Blood Tithe counters, and if you do, you can either give your attack Cleave and Snare or knock back one. On the subject of those Blood Tithe counters, that's the Gore Hulk and Drom both up to two now because they started with one and they've both managed to successfully deal damage. Well, some necromancy was afoot in the third action for the Sepulchral Guard. The Warden activated again, because of course he did, and he used that Warden's Command upgrade he's given himself. He gives himself a charge token, he brings back two dead fighters and places them on empty starting hexes. So, welcome back, Inevitable Petitioner, Rising Petitioner, both of whom now have raised counters, which means they are both inspired. And because two friendly fighters are inspired, the Warden himself has also inspired. The word inspire has lost all meaning. Skullgrinder Helix was, Herax rather, was the third activation for the Gore Chosen. Doing a charge action, he moved around the lethal hex. He did not go through the lethal hex, so he didn't take damage there. He swung into the champion, two dice looking for hammers. He got a crit, no hammers, but that's okay. And they whiffed their dodge, so the champion has taken two damage. He is still standing, though he has one health remaining. We'll need to move around a little bit here just to cover the final activation of round one for the guard. Warden activated, picked two skeletons to do move actions. The champion moved away from Herrick, who opted not to push him away because he wanted to try and kill him. And I don't think he can now unless he's willing to spend blood tithe counters. I think he can spend a blood tithe counter to get range two. Need to double check. But anyway, that was one skeleton moved, and to see the other one, we're going to have to look at the top end of the table. The rising petitioner was moved. He moves three on his inspired side, so he moved from there, and he's up above the Gore Hulk where you probably can't see him because he's so small compared to him. He is adjacent to him, which is a bit of a danger, but hey, we'll see what happens as we go to the final action for round one for the Corn Boys. And the final action of the round was a swing and a miss by the Gore Hulk, just trying to crush the Rising Petitioner again. It would have given him a Blood Tide counter and inspired him. Would have been lovely and violent for the next round, but two dice looking for swords, and he rolled a double support and a hammer. So, nothing there. To the end phase, see if any cards are scoring. So, in the end phase of round one, let's handle the guard first. They are scoring some cards, not just the one. Uh, they ended the round on one glory so far, but they are gaining one glory on Invigorated Dead, which is Scorbus in the end phase if the number of surviving Inspired Friendly Fires is equal to or greater than the round number. It's round number one, and there's three Inspired, so easy score there. But they're also scoring two on Eternal Legions, bringing their total score to the for the round to four. Scorbus in the end phase if three or more friendly fighters are each in no man's or enemy territory. They have one in no man's land, sorry, two in no man's land and one in enemy territory. If the Gore Hulk had managed to kill the inspired rising petitioner, that wouldn't have scored. So yeah, they ended with four by gaining three there. But abnormally for the Gore Chosen, they're also gaining three in the end phase. They mostly do their work via murder. But they're earning one for blood calm claim, sorry, not calm, they're never calm. Blood Claim, Scorus in end phase of one or more friendly fighters, each hold an objective within one hex of no man's territory. The Gore Hulk is sitting on an objective in no man's land, so that's scored. But they also score two for Glorious Battle. Scorus in end phase if four or more fighters, so just any fighters, have a charge token and or one or more Blood Tithe counters. Three of them have Blood Tithe counters, three of them have charge tokens, and the Warden gave himself a charge token, so he kind of helps Scorus. So that means as we go into round two, the Guard have four, and Team Corn have six, so they're ahead by two. So to get round two of three started, the Gore Chosen of Drom won first activation and the Gore Hulk activated to make up for failing to kill the Rising Petitioner last round. Two dice, looking for swords it was. He got one sword and it was a whiff on the defense roll, so that's a kill for one glory. And one glory was spent to give the Gore Hulk the retaliate power. We've seen this a bunch when they're on the table, the Gore Chosen. It's a fun one, but there's the text if you want to read it. So that's alongside his Aura of Wrath upgrade. Now, you might notice, if we just go over here though, that the Rising Petitioner is back 
yet again, and that's because in the power phase, Restless Dead was played. Choose a friendly fighter other than the Warden who's out of action, place them on an empty starring hex in your territory and give them a raise counter and, oh, sorry, and one charge token. So they are also considered to be charged, but hey, he's blocking the Warden in case the Gorhog decides to go in on a further activation. Well, we're going to cover the Spoke Regards first activation here, however, a catastrophic error has been noticed where a skeleton fell off the table. Uh, not sure when, was it ever on the board? It might have been on the edge of the table and got knocked off before filming started. But yeah, the good old zealous petitioner who I kept confusing with the inevitable petitioner. Now, yeah, it doesn't help when one of them isn't on the table. So the Spoke Guard have actually been a man down this entire time. Now, it doesn't really affect them based on how they've done, but that does kind of throw into question what would have happened. The only space that wasn't used up at the start of the game, I think, was this one. Or this one, so or some. Sorry, I forgot they were zoomed in for where what happened. It was either this one or this one that wasn't used, since they actually do use up every single starting hex. I don't remember which one it was, but we're just going to bring them in, and rather than just have them immediately potentially get killed by Drum, we're going to put them there. Apologies for that. It got knocked off the table. I'm amazed it's not broken because these skeletons are very fragile. But he, this Alice petitioner, is there now. And honestly, it's going fine for them, so if they win when they were a man down for a third of the game, that just shows how powerful the Sepulchral Guard are. Anyway, for their actual activation, the Warden moved two skeletons again. The Champion and the Harvester moved together, and ended up where you can see them, right there. Second activation for the Gore Chosen, it was Herrex, who just swung into the Harvester since he presented himself. Technically he could have done a charge action to try and get the kill on the champion, but he was mostly looking to land a hit in order to inspire, and that's precisely what he did. One success, which was not blocked, two damage so the Harvester doesn't die, but he is now inspired along with the Gore Hulk. And in the power phase, powerful hatred is being given to him at the cost of one unspent glory, which just means that... He is considered to be supporting friendly fighters with an X, where X is equal to the number of blood tide counters he has, which is now three. Oh, on the subject of the Spokal Guard not particularly caring about being a man down, they just scored a card worth two or after that activation, Undying Watchman. The criteria has been met. Score this immediately after an opponent's activation step if your warband holds two or more objectives and one of those is in enemy territory. They hold objective 1, which is in enemy territory, and objective 2, which is in their own. So, yep, that scores for 2, takes them up to 6, so they're now trailing by 1. The Warden activated again, because of course he has. He's activated literally every time for the guard, and he shuffled around two more skeletons. So, the recently returned off the floor, Zealous Petitioner, moved on to objective 4, and then we have to go to the other end of the table, because the champion continued moving off of that objective, he's just moved two hexes right to the back end of where the Gore Chosen started. Drom is getting quite cross at this point, so he's the third activation of round 2 for the Gore Chosen, doing a charge action to the hex you can see. He's got range 2, so he decided not to get point blank and avoid supports counting his successes. Two dice looking for hammers, he got one success against the, this is the inevitable petitioner I believe, with the red shield, yep. And he rolled a crit, so the attack didn't get through, Drom has failed, and that would have inspired him if he'd landed that hit. However, in the power step, he is playing Skin of Brass upon himself. It is a prayer card, and it's just to give him a bit of protection on the off chance the Sepulchral Guard ever decide to swing at anyone. They usually don't, but hey, if they do, it's minus one damage to a minimum of one, and it persists until the end of the round or until he is dealt damage. The Warden activated again, he chose two skeletons to force them to make moves. It was the Harvester and the Champion again, and they both moved a hex to where you can see them. They are both on objectives in the back line though, which I presume was the goal. Final activation of round two, the Gore Hulk is mad. He did a charge activation and went after the Prince of Dust, although really he's aiming for the Warden, but the Prince of Dust is in the way. On his Inspired side, he's rolling three dice, still looking for either swords or hammers, depending on which attack you did. Uh, it was ham uh, sorry swords this time because he was hoping for the three damage, but the Prince of Dust successfully blocked it. So rough, rough one, no damage dealt. Well, one final activation for the Warden, and he moved only a single skeleton this time. The inevitable petitioner was moved from here to here, and that's just to block himself in with uh, like support. He does not want to get attacked. In the power step, though, he did pay one glory to give himself the Legacy of Dust upgrade. 
it, it can be given to him or the Prince of Dust. Plus one damage to range one attack actions made by friendly petitioners within two hexes of this fighter. If this fighter is within two hexes of a friendly petitioner, the fighter is supporting that petitioner. So he helps out the people around them and might let them live longer. And that takes us to the end phase of round two. So at the end of round two, both sides are once again scoring. It's only one glory for the Gore Chosen of Drawn with Hack and Slash right here, which is hopefully in focus. Score this in the end phase if two or more successful attack actions were made during your activation in the previous step. They were indeed, so that brings them to eight. Uh, unfortunately, the guard are scoring retake what is ours, which is worth a massive three glory right here. Score this in the end phase if your warband holds three or more objectives and one or more of those is in enemy territory or no man's land. They hold two in enemy territory and two in their own territory. So they scored three and that takes them to nine. So they are now winning by one point as we go into the final round. The Gore Chosen of Drom won first activation as we jump into the third and final round and the Gore Hulk wants to devour that warden or crush his bones I guess, there's nothing really to eat. He did a charge action and his movement allowed him to get round to just hit the warden with no support. Now he opted to do his throttle, or rather his choke, which does the throttle rule, which is three dice looking for hammers so a better chance of it landing. It only does one damage. He got two successes. Warden with its defense roll says one damage. However, you can then spend one blood tithe to counter to make it two damage. So he did. That's half the warden's health gone. The throttle also means that he gets a move token. So the warden counts as having moved. And what else? He can't be driven back. And that's it. Yeah, and then you can remove the blood tide counter to make it one extra damage, which he did. So hopefully that will hold him in place. One unspent glory is being spent on Final Frenzy, and that's been given to Drom, just in case they try and snipe him, because he's got five health. Uh, the Gore Hulk has six on his Inspired side, although it's currently down to five because of the one he suffered earlier. It just means he can't be taken out of action the first time he would die. It's kind of like a, a, like a phoenix down. For the Sepulchral Guard, the Warden activated again, because of course he did, and he didn't move. Uh, because he knows he's safe, the Gorhawk can't activate again unless Drom and Herrix have charge tokens. So he knows he's safe for a couple of turns, so he just made a couple of skeletons move. The newly returned Zealous Petitioner and Inevitable Petitioners are swarming Drom, and to that end, in the power phase, Pitiless Command it was also played. You choose a friendly fighter with a raise counter, and they can get pushed up to two hexes, and that is the Rising Petitioner also getting pushed there. So all the petitioners, who I think are still within range to get that buff from the warden, right? It's within two hexes. So just two out of the three have the buff, but that's still plus one damage. And they get count, uh, count as having double support if they already have single support. So yeah, Drom's a little bit surrounded. Well, Drom decided to get out of dodge and did a charge action up to where you can see him again making use of that range two on his basic attack. Two dice looking for hammers into the rising petitioner crit and a success so he has once again been obliterated off the table such is his want and need will he come back a third time probably so that's one for the kill but also one for a brutal reckoning right here a friendly fighter's attack action takes an enemy fighter of action if that friendly fighter had one or more blood tithe counters and or one or more wound counters he had a bunch of blood tithe counters so that makes them both even now i think Oh no, that made them pull ahead by one, because of the one for the kill as well, yeah. So the Gore Chosen are back ahead, barely. Well, we're over in the Gore Chosen's half of the map, but the Warden activated and he rests the Rising Petitioner again. So he's back in Pog form. He's not in a starting hex in their territory though, because Startling Reformation was played. Play this after you give a friendly fighter a raise counter, he was just given his third. Place that fighter in an empty starting hex in enemy territory and then give them a charge token. So he has ended up there, and that also scores Battle Without End, which is definitely how it feels to fight these skeletons. Score this immediately after an activation or power step in which you gave the second or subsequent friendly fighter a raise counter in the same phase. So there you have it. So that's them back even. It's completely even. Second last activation of the game for Skull Crusher Herrix, or rather for the Gore Chosen, and it was Herrix who activated. He did a charge action to try and do that one damage that would kill the champion. And boy did he whiff. It was just a big old double support whiff. That's not what we want to see in this late stage of the game. So, yeah, rough. And we're sticking over this end of the table because the second last activation for the guard was the warden again. Which puts him in a very dangerous position because that means that the Gorhog can try and kill him. 
and with the Thrall is not a low chance. Well, either way, he chose two skeletons to move. The Champion and the Harvester, they both scarpered to opposite ends of the table and just ran away from Herrix. Now, I can't emphasize enough how desperately I wanted to see the Gore Hulk murderize the Warden. However, that is not the play that needs to happen for them to have a chance to win. It has to be something super boring. It has to be the Gore Hulk doing a move action to where you can see him next to Drom there. So that's what they're doing. I actually, you know what, let's roll the dice anyway just to see would he have killed them. All he would have needed to do was throttle, so three dice looking for hammers and then he could pay Blood Tithe to get the bonus one damage. So would it have mattered? Probably would have murdered him. He only has one defense dice. If it's a crit, he would have lived. Nope, he would have died. So the Warden would have died. That's not what's happened though. Playing for the end phase here. And on that note, it is over to the Spoker Guards. A final activation, and it's the last activation of the entire game. Well, speaking of lackluster finishes, the final action, I guess, technically wasn't the Warden, so it wasn't a perfect game of the Warden activating every single time. They cycled an objective card just to see if they got something else to score. So let's go to the end phase. This is coming down to that because we're going into the end phase with both sides completely even. So as a reminder, we entered this final end phase with both sides on a pretty decent score of 10. Um, but in fantastic fashion, the Gore Chosen have actually won. But we'll just quickly cover. There was a score for the guard. It's right here. It was March of the Dead. It was worth two glory. Score us in the end phase if you have five or more friendly fighters that have move or charge tokens. Yep, that's true. So they scored two, meaning their final score was a very decent 12. However, the Gore Chosen managed to make happen five glory in this end phase. And that's just down to the Gore Hulk's showing restraint. If the Gore Hulk had went for the kill on the Warden, they would have scored, well, one for the kill and the three. That would have been four. They still would have won, actually. So he could have had the satisfaction of the kill. Oh, well. But let's cover this. Grim Satisfaction, speaking of satisfaction, scores for a massive three. Scribus in the end phase if you have four more fighters that have one or more wound counters. One, two, three, four. Yeah, there's four. So that scored for three, and because oh, it counts friendlies as well, right? Yeah, it's just fighters, because the Gore Hulk has one. <laughs> the only damage he suffered was a, cel a skeleton exploding. Once again, they didn't swing once. And they're also scoring worshipped in battle. Uh, so that's what they got for the Gore, Gore Hulk moving back there right at the end. Scorbus in the end phase, if two or more surviving friendly fighters each have one or more blood tithe counters, and they're within one hex of no one's territory, which they both are. So that is it. They score five there, taking their final score to 15, playing 12. So the Gore Chosen of Drom win. And not only did they win against the nightmare horde of never-ending resurrecting skeletons, but they all lived, which is rare. And keep in mind, if the Gorehawk or Drom had been, you know, fought, they would give up extra glory if they died. The the cards that the guard were drawing uh, were just all perfect for just moving around, which is their ideal situation. And getting the Warden's Command upgrade cards super early is really helpful as well. Yes, there were a man down, the skeleton that was knocked off the table didn't end up doing anything, so it didn't really make a difference. They did start drawing towards the end because they'd scored a lot of their cards. Uh, the cards that they can score for actually going into combat, but when you're going up against the Gore Chosen, it was actually to their benefit that they weren't trying to take them out because there was a few cards like um, Untouchable Fury right here, which would have scored if they'd been attacked and they wouldn't have been one shot by a, a pathetic little skeleton. So. Yeah, they, well, I was going to say it worked out for them. They still lost, but that was just luck with the cards scoring at the end of the third phase there. that Those five points was not seen coming, really. But either way, thank you very much for watching. I sincerely hope you enjoyed the Warhammer Underworlds content. If you do, please do share your support in any way you can. In terms of free stuff you can do, just liking, commenting, or subscribing definitely helps. Or if you can spare extra, consider pressing the thanks button. Or becoming a channel member you get access to video series sometimes up to a week early before anybody else or, or you can check out the channel sponsor and if you buy anything via my affiliate link I will be compensated they have Warhammer Underworlds they have Games Workshop in general a bunch of other stuff I cover on the channel all that either way enjoy the rest of your day and I shall see you next time Ta -ta for now